David, there's been a lot of talk about you not getting into the NASCAR Hall of Fame on the first ballot. Is there any way to put into words what your reaction was when you heard the voting results? Well, I heard uh, two or three weeks, you know, before the voting went in, that to who's going to go in, you know, and stuff like that. And uh, there was a guy that, uh, I, well, he knew, he said four of them. He said the two Francis you know's going in, and he said uh, Richard and Earnhardt's going in because they won seven championships, you know. So uh, I understand that. And he said, uh, from what I understand, they want a car owner to go in. And he said, that'd probably be Hendrix. And I told him, I said, no, I don't think so. Yeah. He said, why not? You know, as good as they've done it. <laughs> I said, well, if you want to go back like they really ought to, I said, it'd be Junior Johnson. He said, what makes you think so? I said, if you just think about it, and I don't know whether you know it or not, but Junior Johnson the one that got R.J. Reynolds to go into NASCAR, yeah. you know, and got started. And I said, and look how much, how many millions of dollars they made <laughs> off of R.J. Reynolds, you know, because R.J. Reynolds paid everything. And I said, it'd be Junior if they get a car owner, you know. And he said, you know, I hadn't even really thought about that, but uh, he was right. And the guy, you know, he told me exactly what was going to happen. Will it be enough for you to go in next year? Well, I mean, it's just like uh, racing. Mm-hmm. You know, you you always want to be number one, you yeah. know, and, and I would like to win in the first time. No, I am not lying about it. But uh, since I'm not, you know, uh, I don't care where I'm going or not now, if you want to know the truth. But really the way I felt like I shouldn't have been in to start with and nobody else shouldn't have went in except France Sr. And then I, I felt like they ought have got to older people like uh, Raymond Parks, mm-hmm. he's still alive. He's 95 years old. And what I understand, he's the one that let France have the money and also furnish a bunch of cars to start racing, start with, you know. So he ought to have been in there. Like Herb Thomas, I think he won the first championship or right at or something. Mm-hmm. So he should have been in there. I felt like the first drivers and the owners and stuff like that ought have been the, should have been the first one to go in and start with. Then, like in the 50s and maybe the 60s the next year and the 70s, it ain't going to look like that. But uh, it, it it would have been nice to be the first of them. But, you know, you get to looking at it, wasn't nobody but Junior Johnson and Petty is the only one that's still alive that went in that time. So yeah. it, uh, I just felt like the older guys ought to went in first. David, you're one of the two or three best drivers whoever strapped into a race car in NASCAR. Where would you rank yourself? Number one. <laughs> if you don't feel like you're the best out there, you're going to get beat. No doubt about it. Uh, every time I got in a race car, even the first race I won, which was the World 600, well, it wasn't the first one I won. It was the first big one like that right. I'd ever won. Uh, and I was sitting there in uh, Ray Fox's car, you know, getting ready to start that race. And, you know, I said, you know, uh, this car and these people, they, I said, they don't know who's driving this car, you know. And I feel like if they can do it, I can do it. Okay. And 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 I ended up winning the race, you know, and led uh, over half of it. But uh, I don't know. We never will forget. Rusty Waters one time said Earnhardt was the best guy out there driving. He's the best driver there are out there. And I said right then, I said, Rusty. If you don't feel like you're the best one out there, he's going to beat you every time you get out there. And so Earnhardt liked to kill him three or four times, you know, <laughs> him and everything else. But yet he always still said that about yeah. him. Well, yeah. uh, that's, that's, I don't I ain't ever felt that way. I felt like it, uh, if anybody else can do it, I could do it. How did racing come to be the thing that you were going to do with your life? I've always wanted to do it. Ever since I saw my first race, I said, when I get big enough and old enough, uh, that's what I'm going to do for a living, you know. And I used to go to fairground and uh, watch uh, Cotton Owens and the guys around here, you know, go over and, and run the race. And so I'd climb the tree and watch them. Now, you mentioned the 61 World 600 at Charlotte, your first big win. You evidently blew a tire with I a did. couple of laps to go. Right. And you were already two or three laps ahead of, of the field, and you finished that race on the rim. Right. I well, was actually seven laps ahead, is what I understand. You know, you were seven laps ahead. Really? One time. See, back then, we couldn't have a wretched rear end or nothing like that. Uh-huh. So we pulled off of one wheel, and which was the right rear, and our right rear is what I blowed. And so every time I'd mash the gas, the rim would just spin on the tire. And, and so I wouldn't run in, I probably wouldn't run in 20 mile an hour, if you don't know the truth, you know. And, uh, of course, Fireball kept zooming by me and running around, you know, and <laughs> kept laughing at me. So yeah. I, f- I figured, I, you know, I'd done lost. I didn't know I was that far ahead. 
And when I come off the fourth turn, I seen the guy still waving the white flag, you know. Yeah. And I said, well, I'm still leading this thing, you know. <laughs> and so come up and got the checkered flag. So you thought you'd lost the race. Oh, yeah. I didn't even have no idea I was still leading the race. I knew I was leading it and going down the back stretch is where I blew the tire. And so when I come off the fourth turn, the guy had the white flag up, you know, right. fixing to give me the white flag. And I seen that. And then I said, well, I got one more lap besides that. And uh, I ended up, I forgot how far I was ahead, but I was still uh, four or five laps, I guess it was three or four anyway. Now, you won your first championship driving for Cotton Owens. Mm-hmm. Uh, what was it like driving for him? It was good. Uh, I really enjoyed it. You know, uh, like I said, I drove for Ray Fox to start with. And after that, uh, Cotton had done retired and uh, getting different people to drive his car. So, uh, And he come asked ask me to want to know if I wanted to drive uh, more races. And I said, sure, that'd be fine, you know. And uh, he said that... Uh, let me drive, you know, his car with Dodge. He just went with Dodge. He went with Dodge, I think, and run a few races in 62 or something like that. Mm-hmm. And in 64, I started with him, and uh, we ran well, quite a few races. Well, right. I might have run some in 63, but in 64, uh, I ran more races, or maybe it's 65, you know. And uh, I didn't run all of them, but I ran quite a few races. We was getting ready to run for the championship, as in 65 then. So we run quite a few races in 65, and in 66 is when we went and run all the races to win the championship. And uh, we, uh, we, we won it, you know, by running all the races. Well, we didn't really win all of them. I, don't th- I think there was two or three that we actually missed in uh, no, 66. No. No, you didn't run the full schedule. I mean, you. I think you skipped maybe three or four. Something like that. Something you like know. that. That year, you won 15 races, and most of them were on fairly short tracks. You know, half Yeah, mostly that's what we ran then, okay. you know. The Dodge, uh, we, well, we didn't know anything. Uh, Dodge didn't either, as far as that goes, as far as running on super speedways. And we were a little behind on short, uh, as far as horsepower. And then they come out and, uh, you know, they had the Hemi and we started doing that and it got running better. But uh, then NASCAR outlawed the Hemi. And yeah. uh, that's when the Ford come out with, uh, what, twin cams, overhead mm-hmm. cams, something like that. So they outlawed that too, you know, and uh, I guess it's make you can race them a little bit cheaper. But uh, it was uh, it was good. It was fun working and working with Cotton like that. Now, was that part of the strategy to run as well as you could on short tracks, dominate on short tracks, and then get what you could on the on the well, bigger we, super Well, we, we was getting all we could anyway, you know, <laughs> on short tracks or the, you know, big tracks. But yeah. uh, it just seems, well, you know, it just don't take as much like running on dirt and stuff like that, which we had a lot of dirt races run too. And, uh, you know, you can take a dirt car and just about uh, – uh, run good or, or you know and uh, it's no matter what springs you got under or anything else as long as it's uh, halfway decent uh, you can do pretty good on dirt okay now you guys lost dodge backing is that why you left cotton uh let's see we was probably about well we was in 60 one sixty six, sixty seven, 67 67 i believe is uh-huh. something along now well what happened then we was going to run uh uh, most of the racers or all the racers, I guess, in '67 too, mm-hmm. and it's it's kind of funny the way it happened. Uh, but uh, we was getting ready to go to Columbia, and so uh, we got over there, and uh, Cotton had the truck outside and everything, and he went home to take a shower or something. I don't know what it was, but when I got there, you know, we always went and got ice and stuff like that, or stopped and got ice. So me and the boys, we took off to the ice house and got some ice and everything to put in the coolers for the drinks and things. So when we left uh, to go get that, Cotton come up, and he seen that uh, we was already gone. And so he thought we'd run off and left him, you know. (laughs) So it uh, it got teed him off a little bit, in which you can't blame him, you know, because he thought we was gone. And so he got mad and just pulled a car and truck on the inside the garage. He said, well, if they run off, leave me and leave me here by myself and – uh, I'm not even going, you know. So we took off to Columbia, and when we got back with ice, we seen the car and truck gone. We said, well, Cotton's already gone. <laughs> so we took off to Columbia trying to catch him, and when he got there, no Cotton. He hadn't even got up. So uh, that uh, we got there, and we didn't get to race then, you know, so he was at home. And uh, the next morning, uh, like I say, the boys come in to go to work and everything, and he 
steal teed off and he done fired one or two or something or said something to him. <laughs> so they quit or whatever, but they anyway, they fired some of them or yeah. then I come in, I said, uh, what's wrong? I said, you firing everybody or what? He said, well, well, what happened? He said, if you don't like it, you can leave too. You just like it. And I said, well, I don't like it. So I'm gone, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> I turned around and left. And, uh, of course, uh, I went after that. I went with Holman Moody. Yeah, and uh, of course I went with them, and I won the championship in '68 with them, and '68 uh, and '69. Right. You know, and I actually won the championship every time I actually run for it yeah. and run the races. So it was, uh, and I had a good relationship with them. And uh, what happened with them? We was in California uh, testing for Ford. And uh, Charlie Gray was out there with us, and uh, he was with Ford. And uh, we went to eat lunch one day and come back in, and Charlie said, Well, I said, you might as well load up and go home. I said, Ford just pulled out of racing and while we was out there testing, you know. Wow. And so uh, that's what we did. We just loaded up, quit, quit our test, and come on back, you know. And so, uh, of course, Holman Moody had enough parts and motors and everything. They could run two or three years, I guess, if they wanted to. Mm-hmm. But uh, since Ford pulled out of racing, I guess they felt like it. Uh, they needed to do something. So uh, when I went up there and talking to him, and he uh, wanted me to drive for uh, 40%. Of course, uh, everybody I've ever drove for, I always got 50% for driving. And uh, he said, uh, you know, they pulled out of racing, so uh, I need you to start driving for 40%. I said, John, at 10% of what I would get is not going to keep you in racing. I said, if you, <laughs> if you can't make it on that, I said, uh, uh, we might as well just quit right now. Yeah. So, And uh, and I know there wasn't only me cutting my salary just because that Ford pulled out of racing. As much money as he had and much parts, he wouldn't have had to buy none from, you know, for three years anyway. So, uh, so I left him. And uh, then later I went with the Woods, you know. Yeah. And, of course, uh, they just uh, – Glenn or Leonard, one of them called me. I don't know which one it was, and asked me, "Did I want to run Daytona in their car?" And I had tried their car out once before when we was down there at Daytona, and I know we'll forget it. To, uh, ever who I believe Fort was driving for them at the time mm-hmm. or something, and uh, but uh, wasn't nobody there. And uh, he asked me, they asked me, would I try their car out? Because their driver wasn't there, and I said sure. So I went out there and drove it, and I come back in. I stayed out there a pretty good while. Just kept running, you know, and the feeling of it. And I came in, and Dick Hutchison at the time was uh, working on my team, you know, for Holman and Moody. And uh, he said, uh, "You ain't never stayed out there and run that long." <laughs> he said, "You always uh, was just go out there and run a few laps, and come back in." I said, "Well, I Dick, tell you the truth, I ain't ever had a car drive that good before." <laughs> you know, so I was wanting to find out, trying to find out what was what was they've done to it or whatever, and uh, so we could fix mine that way. And uh, but anyway, uh, when they called me and asked me would I drive Daytona, did I want to drive their town a car for them? And I said, well, sure. And they said they're going to take two cars. Uh, I'd be in one, and Fort be in the other. So uh, I said that'd be all right, you know. Mm-hmm. And uh, so I went to Daytona and. Uh, I don't even know where I finished, but I finished real good. I, I beat Ford anyway, you yeah. know, and uh, that's really what I wanted to do because, <laughs> you know, he was driving the other car. And uh, then later on he has asked me that, well, I drove it, I don't know how many times that year, different times with him. And so uh, at the end of the year he asked me that I want to drive their car all time next year. I said, sure, that'd be good, you know. And, and he said, well, do you want to run two cars or you want to just run, you know, by yourself? And I said, well, I feel like I'd be better off if I just run one car, you yeah. know, and not take two cars. And they said, well, good, uh, you know. <laughs> said, we didn't really want to run two no way. Said, yeah. uh, we felt like it, uh, you know, you could do better if we just had one car. And uh, that's what we did from then on, you know. You mentioned this before. You only ran what amounted to the full schedule three or four times. Three times. And you won the championship three times. Three times, right? If you'd run the full schedule over the majority of your career, how many championships would you have won? There's no telling. If I'd have been with the Woods or Holman and Moody, well, not, uh, even Cotton, you know, we didn't. Uh, we we won every time we run for it, even with Cotton. But uh, 
if I'd have had uh, the Holman and Moody, which they had plenty of help and, you know, the equipment and stuff to do the same thing and, uh, as, as anybody, uh, in the woods, which was, uh, they had uh, what you say forward, you know, they give them all the parts and stuff they had. And uh, I don't know. I really don't. I feel like it, I could have won quite a bit. I really do. Do you ever look back on that and regret that decision? Well, I wished. Well, it wasn't my decision. Yeah. See, it was their decision. They didn't want to run all the races, and mm-hmm. uh, they didn't have the help and stuff, and uh, which uh, they was up there in Stewart, Virginia, a little small town. And, uh, of course, uh, I, I guess as long as uh, Ford would have done it, uh, they might or paid them for it, uh, they probably would have done it, and they could have hired more people. But uh, yeah, I felt like I could run, you know, I don't know how many years I drove for them, but I feel like I could have probably won a championship half of those times if I'd have won it, you know. Yeah. What was the Wood Brothers reasoning for not running the full scale? They just, because they was there by the self up there, they had a little small garage and uh, they didn't have the help. And, you know, it was just a family run deal. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and tell you the truth, uh, Leonard is, is the one that done all the work. I mean, Eddie and Lynn, which was smaller then, yeah. and uh, they was just learning on what to do. And uh, they let them tear the car apart and, and uh, put it back together. But uh, Leonard would check everything them boys done. You know, he uh, went right behind them and redone it to make sure that it was done right and stuff like that. And as far as Glenn only thing I ever seen him do was pack wheelbarrows. <laughs> we, just like when we go to Charlotte and uh, we sit on the pole so many times, I believe it was 12 times there in a row or something like that. And uh, he would, uh, I'd, I'd seen him change hubs. You know, they would always use, I'd say, graphite grease or stuff like that or something. And he'd already have the hubs made up to, just for qualifying. And... Uh, he would put them hubs on a car, you know, and, uh, of course, we'd qualify with them and take them off and put the other hubs because they had real thin grease and stuff like that in them. And uh, I seen him put the, put the hub on one time. He put it on with his hand, you know, and tighten it up, you know, and do it with his fingers, hands. I said, that thing ain't tight enough. He said, oh, yeah. He said, you ain't going to drum it two or, th- two or three laps. He said, uh, it won't, it'd be nice. He said, you'll be all right. And he could take his hand and spin that hub, and, man, they'd just keep on turning, you know, because it had the real thin graphite grease and stuff like that in it. And cause stuff like that. They went, they did a lot to that car just to run fast for a few laps, you know. And uh, I know they, they would back off on the brakes. And I didn't have a brake one on that car. If I was to go in the corner and had to hit the brakes or something, uh, well, it, it just went to the floor. Because really? I know after the, after I got through qualifying, I'd have to pump them four yeah. or five times, you know, so I'd have enough brakes to even stop after that. And so, like I said, if I'd have blowed a tire or something going in the corner, I'd have busted that wall wide open. <laughs> but, uh, but we sat on the pole, and that's what we went there for. David, there have always been a lot of comparisons between you and Richard Petty. At what point did you look at Richard and say, you know, this is the guy that I've got to beat? About every time we run, you know, everywhere we would go, it would always seem like it uh, it would be Richard and myself, you know, mm-hmm. uh, ending up uh, at the end of the race running. And, uh, of course, there were some guys like Dick Hutchinson and Ed Jarrett. They would run, but uh, it seemed like it, a lot of times we would run so hard and sweet and bang, especially with Hutch or somebody like that, and we'd end up uh, – wearing the car out or tearing the car up or doing something and and the other one would end up standing up uh jared or somebody like that would end up maybe in win the race or hutch or somebody you know and so uh, uh we got a little bit smart and decided we we better just make sure we be around at the end of the race and then we had something to run now one of the stats that has always amazed me is the fact that you and richard finished one and two 63 times mm-hmm you won 33 of those times. Right. Has there ever been a case where you maybe tried to aggravate Richard about that and say, you know, no, I no. won 33 times. You just won 30. So I'm the man. No, I've never have. Uh, we haven't, we don't even talk about racing when we get around each other. You know, we yeah. always got something else or going on with a bunch of bull, you know, and <laughs> say something about each other, you know, you know, saying what the other ain't done or can't do or something like that. But, uh, we we've always been good friends, and uh, 
you know, he's my hero, you know. <laughs> and, of course, like I said, if uh, I ever went to a racetrack and, and he was the one that I always looked to and figured if I could beat him, I could win the race. Your most famous one-two finish with Richard was the 76 Daytona 500, and I do want to talk about that one in just a second. But there was a race at Daytona a couple years before that, the 74 Firecracker 400, that's pretty famous, where you took the white flag and kind of lifted or let right. him by. What do you remember about that race? Well, he had me beat if I didn't do something. You know, I knew I had to do something because uh, I always accused him of running no big engine anyway. You know, he has, <laughs> he has done that quite a few times, I found out. But uh, he uh, he had me beat if... Uh, and I said, well, I got, if, if if he'd have went on, ain't no I, only way I could beat him is trapped by him, you know. Yeah. And, and I knew that. I knew that I had to get me a running start and go by him that way because I couldn't just follow him and go by him. And uh, during, during that race, we was going to different things and trying different things, and I was, I'd slow up every once in a while and uh, and see what he would do and see when he could pass me, and I could see when I was the fastest at different points and. And he had me beat, no doubt about it. And I said, well, I don't know what I can do. I'm going to run second. Mm-hmm. If, I, if, I'm, if it comes down between me and him, I said, I'm going to run second, one way or another. There ain't no way I can beat him. And I said, i got to do something to some way or another to try to make him and get in front of me, you know. And so I, he wouldn't do it. I'd slow up, and he would not <laughs> pass me. He'd stay right back there behind me, you know, and he would not try to pass. So... When I was coming by, and right when I got to the white flag, I throwed my hand up and just cut down to the inside like I was out of gas or something. He shot right by me on the outside. And I said, uh-huh. So just quick as I seen him pull out to go by me, I got back on the throttle. Yeah. And uh, it just ended up just right that I just uh, – and I think he thought something was wrong anyway because I was far enough back then. It, when going in one, he probably backed off, you know, a little yeah. bit. And uh, going down the back stretch uh, – I was really drafting. That old Mercury would draft real good. If it just smelt another car in front of it, it would it would really you know break the wind and go on. But it was a big old square front end on it. It would really break a lot of wind. And as long as the car in front of it, I could really draft and pick up a lot of speed. So uh, I caught him down the, going down the back stretch or up close to him and coming off a of four. I caught him enough that I just ducked right down and. And went by him, started by him, and he run me down on the apron then yeah. when he done that. And uh, I beat him, and uh, after the race, he said that that was a dangerous move I pulled. It wasn't half as dangerous as he was running me down on the apron, you know, as far as that goes. But uh, anyway, he got ticked off about it, but uh, I'd found out that uh, before that, uh, he said that uh, there was no way I was going to beat him that day because uh, I think of the last two – July races before I'd pull something on him somewhere or another and beat him yeah. and uh, he uh, he said this is one time that he wasn't going to outsmart me or do nothing pull a little trick on me that, they, that he was going to get me that day and he talked pretty confidence in it is what somebody told me so he undoubtedly had a big engine that day but uh, he he was good let's talk about the 1976 Daytona 500 Richard and myself, we tangled up, you know, and uh, we both spun around, and uh, Richard's car stalled with him, and uh, I kept mine running. And by the time I got turned around and uh, went back and uh, got on the racetrack and got to the chicken flag, I was running about 20 or 30 miles an hour. <laughs> and uh, another thing happened there, uh, I was on the, in the infield, uh, well, in the grass part, right in the pit road there, and uh, some of them people said that Joe Frazon come down the pit road and hit the front end of my car and turned it around towards the start and finish line and went on. But that's not true. Yeah. You know, now Joe Frazon did come down through there and just snibbed the front end of my car, but my car would not turn to the right. If they look at the fam, I backed up and turned around and made a circle to the left and went out on the racetrack that way. But, uh, of course, uh, Joe is known to try to get in a wreck and everything else, you know, <laughs> anyway, but uh, uh, he didn't help me a winner, that's for sure. I've never really heard you and Richard criticize each other about the end of that race. No, we was just racing, you know, no doubt about it. Is there anything that either one of you could have done to avoid that accident? Oh, yeah. I could have backed off. <laughs> <laughs> but that ain't racing you no, know no. uh he he wasn't in front of me and he 
act like he thought he was. So what he was doing, he just kept coming up, you know, and he was coming up to cut me off so I couldn't, you know, back then uh, or time before that, it was we we could draft and pass somebody coming off four and beat them to the start and finish line. Mm-hmm. And uh, he, uh, I always accused him. He knew if he got in front of me, there's no way I could get back by him by the time I got out. I was coming off four, see. Mm-hmm. And uh, so he kept coming up and coming up. His right rear hit my left front. And, yeah, I could have backed off. Yeah. And and I I figured that he'd just come over and hit me, then that would be, you know, he stopped. But he'd come up too far, too far. And of course, that spin us got us both spinning around, and uh, so uh, and I kept mine running, and he didn't. 